Imagine using the world you just saw created inside of Van Gogh's Starry Night as a classroom. There your students can go as avatars to learn about Van Gogh via demonstrations, streaming movies, narrated PowerPoints. But most of all, imagine giving your students the tools to recreate some of Van Gogh's works, as Rob Wright did. This is an Immersive Learning Simulation, or ILS, also known as a serious game. An ILS blends the elements of gaming with scenario-based learning and technology to immerse the student in a virtual reality for a learning interaction to take place. The result is that the rapt attention and engagement of games are then used in the service of learning as the sensory appeal of a virtual reality, the psychological connection of role-playing, and the power of Web 2.0's social collaboration all come together. Today on Second Life's Teen Grid, many of the students there, aged 13 to 17, take all of their classes not only online, but also in this virtual world using immersive learning simulations. Without these immersive learning simulations, Second Life might be just another interesting artifact of the digital age. But immersive learning simulations are the best reason I've found so far to be in Second Life as an educator. More important than Second Life itself is this concept of immersive learning simulations for educators. Second Life, although it's the largest and most popular virtual world right now, could end up as the AOL or Netscape of metaverses. Big dog on Monday, dog meat on Friday, especially as Web 3D develops. Indeed, the Gardner Group estimates that by 2011, 80% of all Internet users will also be members of virtual worlds. But as of right now, Second Life certainly is receiving a lot of attention, and deservedly so. It just so happens that in 2008, Second Life won an Emmy for technology and engineering use in entertainment. Also, Second Life's traffic continues to grow. Right now, Second Life is claiming 12 million registrants. However, it does not account for the fact that one person can have more than one avatar. So, as a result, I pay attention to the daily statistics, and since I've been on during the last six months, I have not seen the total of people logged on go past 1.2 million, and the number of people online at a single time very much from 52 to 56, sometimes 58,000. However, the big story on Second Life is you and us, educators. As of now, there are 350 education-affiliated groups, schools, colleges, associations, etc., on Second Life, making education the fastest-growing segment of this virtual world and all others. Just among the institutions themselves, you can see variety, from Princeton to Central Piedmont Community College and back to Harvard from East Carolina State to Ohio State, from the University of Queensland to Hong Kong Technological University, Edinburgh, the University College of Dublin, major European universities, the University of Hamburg, and the National Physical Laboratory in the UK. Of course, we can't forget about Notre Dame and a host of other large, traditional American colleges and universities. After spending a good bit of time on Second Life, I've come to believe that the time and resources that these schools are putting into this program are well worth it. And so I went ahead and began to develop two different Second Life offerings for UMUC students. The first one is Escribeer House. It serves as an in-world effective writing center and mirrors many of our offerings in our online Web Tyco Writing Center. It's also my in-world office. The second is Escribeer Park. And Escribeer Park I've designed as a sandbox for students 
where I and they can build these immersive learning simulations. Let's take a look at them beginning first with Escribir House.